Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Connor, and today we're going to be continuing my 2020 reading wrap-ups with books 31 through 35. If you guys don't know, these are the videos where I do shorter miniature reviews of all the most recent books that I've read. I've actually fallen behind because I really have read a lot recently, so trying to catch back up. Nook is here, as usual. Hi, bud. He's doing good. If I've done an individual book review, I'll leave it up in the card symbol so you can check it out, as well as down in the description. Hi, buddy. <laughs> But let's get started. Jet is under the bed right now, so I don't know what he's doing. If you can hear that. <laughs> and Nook's all confused. There we go. They're both here now. <laughs> the 31st book that I read in 2020 is Order of the Majestic by Matt McClush. I have no idea if I'm saying his name correctly, but sorry. <laughs> if you guys don't know, Matt McClush also wrote a series that's called the Jack Blank Adventure series, which I have read and I have done a book review for the first book. Because I read and enjoyed that other series, I wanted to give this one a shot and see what was going on with it. Hi. Okay. In this one, we follow a boy named Joey. At the beginning of the book, you find out that he has gotten a perfect score on a standardized test, and so now he's labeled a genius. He ends up having to go in and take an additional test to see if he is able to get into this very exclusive school, and during that testing, he ends up finding out that magic is real. He meets a magician called Redondo the Magnificent or something like that. And during the course of the novel, he gets mixed up with the Order of the Majestic. The Order of the Majestic wants to protect magic, wants to save the world, wants to do all the good things. And then there is an evil group who want to hoard all the magic for themselves and deny real regular people from having magic. That is called the Invisible Hand. Joey is competing with a couple of other children to see if he can inherit all of the magical objects that Redondo is going to bequeath to someone. All while the invisible hand is in the background looming, wanting to get into this theater, which is where Redondo lives, and get the objects for themselves. I was pleasantly surprised by this. I liked following Joey as he was going to this theater and learning magic, or at least trying to learn magic, as well as him interacting with all of the other kid characters that are in this book. I especially loved the setting. I loved this theater. The theater reminded me of Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. If you guys don't know, Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium is a movie that has Natalie Portman in it. Basically, the toy shop is alive and has fits and moods and stuff like that. And the theater in this is similar Similar to that, it's linked to Redondo's mood or happiness or whatever, and so it was cool to see the theater change throughout the course of this novel as events unfold. There were a couple of things that I didn't love, however. One is the academy that Joey ends up going to is super exclusive, and that could be a direct commentary on how some schools have a lot more resources and so their students have a leg up when entering the real world versus other schools that don't have as many resources and the students have a harder time. But I don't feel like that, that was really what the aim was. This school is supposed to be like very cool, very modern in the way that they approach teaching and everything like that. There's only like 12 students or something like that and it takes up a huge portion of a New York City block or, and I just didn't get it. I don't know why they don't have more students. And my only other significant con was that I felt like Joey didn't really have a whole lot going on outside of the Order of the Majestic. Joey should have had a harder time balancing being a part of the Order of the Majestic or at least trying to become a part of the Order of the Majestic with real life. He doesn't have any friends and I don't really understand why that is. His parents are not really all that interactive with him. They're there but not really. I totally forgot he had a mom until she pops back into the story at some point. So I would have liked to see him have other things going on that would make it more difficult to fully invest in learning magic and everything like that, but he didn't. I ended up giving this book four stars. The next book I read was Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson. This is the sequel to Skyward. I've done individual book reviews for both the first and this book, so I'll leave them up in the card symbol if you want to check them out. This book is incredibly difficult to talk about without spoiling things. In the first book, you follow a girl named Spinza, and the humans have been trapped on this planet called Detritus for a very, very long time. Spinza wants to join the defense force of this world, but her father was labeled as a coward when he was killed while fleeing during battle. In this society that Spencer is a part of, it is incredibly awful to be called a coward, and now she's the daughter of a coward, so it makes it really difficult for her to become a part of the defense force. And in the first book, you follow all of that while she's trying to 
do that. This second book takes the story in a direction that I had no idea that it was going to go into. The universe is explored a lot more than just detritus, so I really enjoyed it for that. I've seen people not super enjoy the shift in the series. To me, it worked. I really enjoyed a lot of the new characters that we got to meet in this story, and I liked a lot of the societal things that this book explores, and I think that it was done well. So when I finished it, I ended up giving this five stars. I really enjoyed it. I think that it was even better than the first book. If you're looking for for more YA science fiction, check it out. After that, I read The Rise of Kyoshi by F.C. Yi. This is set in the Avatar The Last Airbender universe, which if you guys don't know, is a very popular cartoon show that I absolutely love. In the Avatar universe, there's four different groups of people and they're each associated with a different element because certain members of their populations are able to control those elements. There's one person in the world that can control all four elements, fire, water, earth and air and they are called the avatar and after each avatar dies they're reborn again and again and again this book is about the avatar that was two before the one from the cartoon show which is an avatar called avatar kyoshi in this book you find out that she's an orphan and she's been living in this tiny village that's on the outskirts of the earth kingdom at the beginning of the book you find out that there is someone else that people think is the Avatar, but it's actually Avatar Kyoshi. At the beginning of the book, she finds out that she's the Avatar, and then her Avatar journey begins. I really adored this book. I ended up giving it about four and a half stars. Kyoshi pops up in the cartoon show, and she's one of the more interesting historical figures because she's had such a lasting impact on the world hundreds of years after her death. There is an entire island that's called Kyoshi Island in the TV show, so I really loved learning her origin that is covered in here. You learn about why she has fans as weapons. You learn about her headdress. You learn about her makeup and her outfit. You start to learn about why she's the longest lived avatar that there ever has been. And I also really liked that Avatar Kyoshi is a little more open to killing people than some of the other avatars have been. And this book also has a lot of nods to the TV show. There are a lot of things that are brought back and put into this book that I was really enjoying picking up on. I really enjoyed it. If you're an Avatar fan, you're gonna love this. And if you've been curious about why everyone loves Avatar, I think that you could pick this up without watching the TV show, but I think you benefit from watching the TV show first. I highly recommend it for Avatar fans. Nook and Jet wanted to leave the room, so they're outside hanging with Tony. Let's continue. The next thing that I read was Midnighter Volume 1 by Steve Orlando. This first volume is called Out. I originally found out about Midnighter because I was reading the Stormwatch comics in the New 52, and I wanted to continue and read more about him. If you guys don't know, Midnighter is a gay superhero whose power is to be able to figure out what people are going to do next, and then he can decide what to do with that information. So he always has a counterattack to any type of attack that someone could use against him. In this volume, you find out that someone has stolen a lot of very dangerous weapons and magical objects from this place called the Garden, and Midnighter is starting to track down all of those different things to get them out of the hands of terrible people. One thing I like about Midnighter is that he is very violent. He does kill people and he doesn't have any qualms about doing so. Superheroes like Batman and Superman and Green Lantern, there isn't a whole lot of killing that the superheroes do themselves. And so I think that Midnighter is interesting in that way because he does kill people. Also in this volume, you find out that Midnighter and Apollo, who is another gay superhero, have broken up. And Midnighter is trying to get over Apollo. So he is going to bars and meeting people and sleeping around and stuff like that. I will say that I wasn't loving this as much as I was hoping to. The plot is very scattered and jumpy, so he goes from one plot thread to another. Sometimes it was a little difficult to follow. I found myself having to reread sections to orient myself. It's also pretty repetitive and it always talks about his special abilities. I already know his special abilities, so you don't have to keep telling me over and over and over again. And another thing is that his sexuality is just such a huge focus of this book. I know that there are not a lot of gay superheroes, but it was just very like, he's gay, he's gay, he's gay. And another con that I had was that the artwork changes quite a bit in this, so they had different artists do different issues, and I don't really love when that happens. Like, this artwork is quite different than the ones that I just showed you. It was fine enough, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't anything that I was absolutely loving, so I ended up giving this three stars. And the 35th thing that I read in 2020 is Starfire Volume 1, which is called Welcome Home. This one follows Starfire, which if you don't know, is an alien who comes to Earth. She used to be a princess, but then she gets sold into slavery to save her people. She eventually escapes and ends up 
on Earth. I originally found out about Starfire when I was a kid. I was watching the Teen Titans TV show, the cartoon show, and I loved that cartoon. And so I'm happy that this version of Starfire is similar to that version of Starfire. In this volume, she has been on Earth for a little bit now. She has been interacting with a lot of the super-powered people of Earth, but now she wants to experience a normal life. At the very beginning of the volume, she decides to move to Key West, and then it follows her as she becomes friends with this detective and is trying trying to have a normal life. I ended up enjoying this. I really loved the fish out of water aspect of Starfire in the cartoon show and it's in here as well. As an example, here the officer is saying something and Starfire doesn't understand what she's talking about and so it pops up like this in this little bubble and she's trying to process what she's saying. Another example is here when the character is asking Starfire to give them a hand and she's just like, what? I'm giving you my hand. So I was really enjoying those aspects of this story. My one problem with this so far is that all of the superhero elements are way too easy to solve. There's a lot of buildup. There is someone that is coming to Earth trying to find her so that he can report her location to somebody else and the tension grows throughout the course of this first volume and then it's solved so quickly. I thought that it would take up a lot more pages and actually be a bigger conflict, but it is solved so quickly. I wish that the superhero elements had been a little bit more epic in scale, I guess, mixed in with all of the funny things of her interacting with all of these regular people. But again, I still really enjoyed this and I gave this volume four stars. So those are the next five things that I read in 2020. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below what you've been reading recently. If you have any recommendations for me, leave those down in the comments. Anything else you want me to know, leave it down below and I will talk to you guys next time.